Daoko. Now this is an artist who the more I hear by her, just the more I want to hear. But the truth is, I haven't really got into much of, well, I haven't had a chance to listen to much of her music. I mean, what have I heard so far? I heard her on a collaboration like a year or so ago. I've heard her on the collaboration where she was on the Sheena Ringo song recently. I checked out a lyric video that she put out recently, which I thought was absolutely brilliant. I keep on hearing her coming up in places and just the more and more I'm like, why have I not got into this more? Oh yeah, and Cubit, that Cubit song. Absolutely love that, Beautiful Days. I need to check out more. So anyway, I decided to load up, just, just load up, open up a page and I just thought I'll select a song. I won't go for the most popular one. I'll go for one that's got a good number of views. It seems relatively popular and looks fun. So I clicked on this one. It's called Kairi Tai, Kairi Tai. <laughs> really bad. Hey, do you know what? Anyone who's learning Japanese will notice. It's easy to pronounce Japanese when it's written in hiragana, but when you see it in English, it's much harder to pronounce. I'm here in Japan. I'm learning all the time. But anyway, Kaya Ritai by Daoko. We're going to check it out. It's like uh, just under four minutes long. Uh, again, one of the reasons why I got into her music is because I want to hear some good Japanese pop rap. I, I do really like rap music. I like Japanese pop music. But if I hear rap music, I want to hear it done well. I don't like that kind of cheap throwaway stuff like you get like a, a boy band or a girl band will do in the verse, which is one member of the group has been randomly elected to speak quickly for a bit it's like no you want to hear someone who actually knows and respects rap and of course daoko has come up through that to a certain degree um from what i've heard that's a big part of how she came famous and she came up through a social media route so a lot of my belief is that I'm, i'd love to read more comments about this if you guys want to get in the comments but my belief is that perhaps if she came up through doing rap on social media that she was clearly speaking as a lot of the best japanese rappers do to real world stuff that people actually felt and related to so yeah, I want to hear about that. I've got the lyrics uh, subtitles switched on. So we'll see the English translations as it goes. Yeah, I don't know what kind of song it's going to be. Is it going to be more pop? Is it going to be more rap? I don't know. I'm just looking forward to it because I really want to get on board the Daoko train. Daoko train. God, my pronunciation today. Let's go. Oh, loving the glitch lo-fi look already. And that beat's crazy. A little dissonant. Okay, where's this gonna go? Okay, so starting off with a little bit more of a chant, settling this in. Denny's? I didn't hear her say Denny's. Alright, so far though, I'm loving it. Again, she's talking about very real world observations. Very chill. This whole old school feel is coming across to the aspect ratio. The whole thing looks like it was filmed in the late 90s. Very catchy though. So true. talking a lot about being dazzled by you know the bright lights and the excessive all the intake of reality you know like butts and peaches in your face it's interesting yeah again it's that sort of talk about trying to escape from the excess of reality Just the peace inside your own head
it's interesting because there's something, there's a sort of stoic sarcasm about the delivery. Yeah, that's interesting. And you can see the link to the song that I checked out before. Um, that's very interesting. Okay, this is, um, so one of the interesting things about um, Daoko's voice is it's always got that sort of calm, spoken, very lightness to it. It is interesting though, because she can throw her voice in other ways. Now, just before I get into this, it's worth pointing that out. I mean, like, I mean, even you look at the Cubit song, Beautiful Days as an example. Um, obviously the most recent song I checked out, her lyric video, the one that's on the screen now, that one again is quite chilled out, but very different vibe to this. But yeah, definitely she has got the ability to switch into other modes, but it seems her natural mode is this kind of like quiet speaking, almost like the voice in the back of your head kind of thing. The interesting thing about this though, is that the whole way it's presented, I mean, so she's talking about the bright lights and, you know, the the over uh, the over stimulus that's making it hard for you just to sort of like, you know, switch off and just be, you know, enjoy the natural things in life. And she's saying so many things to do, just let's go home. Uh, and yeah, it's it's true. I mean, if, if anyone, especially if you live in a, a city or something, it can be, and Tokyo especially, you know, you're out and about and you just want to go home, but you feel like you, you look around, you see people doing things and bright lights and all these millions of things to do around you. And you're like, should I go home? I, I, am I missing something if I don't stay out? And you know, it's it's the, the point she's making is really comes across well. And if you've lived in these kind of societies, you get that. Now, personally, I think though that's that's kind of great because you you know you have that option to stay out or go home. But it is very true, and it's an interesting observation I would say about Japanese life as well. That idea that you do kind of live in this duality. I mean, we talk so often about in Japan. There's so many subcultures. There's so many things you can do. There's so many like clubs you can be. You can be a train spotter. You can be into idol music, or you can be into you know you can play golf. There's like sort of little uh, you know sim golf clubs and ranges all around the place. It's like um, in the city. There's like a million things you can be into here. That it's so. I, I, you know, it's, I mean, we could have a whole conversation. I feel like I could expand this into a whole conversation. But yeah, there's so many things like that that it's interesting to hear her talking about this. But it's what comes across here is it doesn't feel like she's personally expressing her view on it. It feels more like she's just kind of stating the facts very dryly. So here it is. I'm going to go home. Ba, ba, ba. So many things to do. Like I say, it's almost a sarcasm to it. It's like, so much to do. I'm going to go home. Uh, we all just look at our phones. You know, there's something about that delivery. Um, and I think it comes across with this also very dry presentation of the video. The video, again, it looks very old school. It looks like it's something that's supposed to be bright and entertaining and you'd see on an old CRT TV, but it's also slightly dead. You know, it's it's kind of like, it's fun, it's entertaining, but it's also a little bit soulless. I get the feeling that that's what she's playing towards here. That's like the whole visual and sonic design of it. Um, I like that. I've got to be honest, I like that. It feels, it doesn't feel like a mistake. It does feel like everything works together. It's a, it's a little bit of a strange approach. Um, in a way, usually I, I do like to hear, oh, that's, sorry, that's my computer telling me I'm running out of hard drive space. Um, I do usually like to hear when rappers almost feel like they're expressing themselves more, but there's, there's a lot to be said for the artistic value of approaching something in a different direction. In fact, that we, we could probably use more of that with people who do this kind of music. And so when I hear this, it's really kind of cool to hear her like, taking this very different approach. You know, she's almost she's almost like the voice in the TV screen asking you, why are you watching the TV? Um, so yeah, I, I really thought this was cool. Uh, as for the backing, the backing was very interesting. It was a, bit, it was a little bit um, dissonant. Uh, had obviously all those lo-fi sort of eight bit vibes going on for the best part of it. Um, it resulted in a song that, you know, the chorus was kind of catchy as a chant, but didn't particularly stay with me. The backing was interesting, but not one of those ones that makes you go, wow, that was really funky and cool. I have to come back to it. This more felt like an interesting song in just sort of like a, it was almost like a bizarre, interesting idea, a very relatable uh, feeling and concept or a very relatable feeling delivered through quite an interesting and artistically quite compelling concept, you know, quite concept, compelling look and sound. Um, yeah, I, I don't know, I wouldn't come necessarily rushing back to this song, but certainly if I heard it again, and I saw it again, it'd be one of those ones where you'd, you got, you don't just listen to it lightly, you stop and you think about it. And um, for me, that's, you know, like a good rap song or a good pop song doesn't always have to be catchy, catchy, catchy. Sometimes that's just as valid. And so for me, I thought this was really cool. Not so much as sort of like a, 
wow, what a classic single is so much as a, what a good song. What a well-made song. And it was tight as well. It was nice, brief, tight. And I appreciate that. I appreciate people not making songs overly baggy and long when they don't need to be. This song did a lot in a short time. I appreciate it. I'm excited for the Daoko journey to continue. I'm excited for the journey to continue. So far, really enjoying it. Uh, always honest on this channel, but I haven't come across anything by her so far that I didn't enjoy, didn't like. Um, this was cool. Anyway, those are my thoughts. As always, get in the comments. Tell me what you think. And until I hopefully see you very soon in Japan for the next one of these videos, be it Daoko or not. For now, ciao, ciao.